on to A in five, four, three, two, one. A's rolling. Mox music. We'll tell you about a new program that's supposed to help Chattanooga police find Going missing people more quickly. B. Plus, we have updated information about the arrest of the Waffle Going back to A for Stokes. Straight ahead. Track A. Now at six. A's rolling. News 12. Now. Going to camera two. You are near. Start your push. Sharks. Now. And on the Putting on John Mercer. And I'm Emily Casulo. Thanks for joining us for News 12 Now at 6. Well, former Tennessee Going to be for the animation. And In the good old days, people would sit down at 6 o'clock and watch a newscast. That's just the way it was. Sometimes it was uh, framed around the dinner hour. Uh, today, people know that you don't have to do that exactly at 6 o'clock. If you miss the story, you can go online and watch the entire story by itself if you want to do that. And that's a, that's a great opportunity for people who have a busy schedule, and that's almost everybody. I mean, cell phones when I started. Do you understand that, right? <laughs> yeah, um, no, we didn't have cell phones when I started. So when you were out in the field on the story, you had to go find a pay phone and dial an 800 number to get back to the station to get an update on anything and if you were trying to uh, to get somebody out in the field you stop at a pay phone and make a phone call the DeZero technology is fantastic the the bonded cellular live shots uh, the way it changes the ability to have a uh, basically one person perform the function of three at any given time in the field all right, so this teacher was facing drug charges yesterday, and now she's facing more felony charges stemming from a sexual relationship that she has with a student. The sheriff tells me that the man was not, went missing last week. His body was found yesterday, and there are two suspects in the case, but it's very much still an ongoing investigation. Satellite truck cost, oh, 400000 450 something like that. And you had to have CDL to drive it, and it's huge, and won't go through a tunnel, and won't go down this street because there's trees overhanging, and it'll bang the dish or the antenna. And now you can do the same thing in a small hatchback with a thing that's the size of a laptop computer. In the old way, there used to be funnels of going through assignment desk, uh, a keeper of paper files a lot of times. And, uh, and organizers and stuff like that. And now we're finding that the, the person who is reporting on the story has much more control over the, the information they have. So they're not just gathering information in the field by talking to original sources. They can also get all the background they need in their hand, basically. They can do it all themselves. And it also uh, makes it the, the transmission of information from the field to the newsroom and turning it back around to the public is much quicker because it can be done uh, from the person in the field and not have to go up through several different channels again. Just realizing that it is changing the landscape. Don't think it's little steps. This is really our iPhone video sometimes is the only video that we have. So knowing how to make that quality um, of the iPhone video translate onto TV and just know how to engage people through video. A plane crash uh, at a local airport where we were not getting any official information from official sources about what had happened, but by actually seeing the pictures that the reporter was sending back through the iPhone, and even though she didn't have anyone giving her information, by seeing the pictures, you still have information that helps bridge the gap there. This one was one of my favorites, so that's why I'm going to tell this story, but it was a car chase that happened in Atlanta. The 10 mile car chase ended on the highway and I was able to get a really good picture of the car because I could take my little iPhone and get it through the gate to get a picture. Your, your camera can't do that. So I was able to truly tell the story of the damage that was done to this car because we had really good images and that could only happen with a cell phone. And you use a lot of uh, Facebook Live. Yes. You're constantly engaging that digital audience. Um, what tips do you have for people out there uh, to, to do that and do it right? be you be the person that they don't get to see on tv they don't get to see you joke and laugh they don't get to see you go in depth they don't really get to see you get excited about the story so use your excitement that you ne can't necessarily show in your two minute story use a 15 minute facebook live to get to know the viewer and let them get to know you <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
And in the specific going viral experience, you know, people love dancing officers, community engagement. So when I chose to put that video up, I didn't necessarily think it would go viral, but I did think it would go really well with our viewers. And just seeing the world enjoy that video was really, was really neat. Long term, you're going to have to just produce content as a news organization and put it out there. And the viewer is going to say, okay, here's the lineup of stories that I want to know. I want to know, I want to know what happened at city council. I want to know what, um, what the traffic is like. I want to know what the weather's like. I always want to know what the weather's like. That's the lifeblood of local news is, is local weather. We're here to give both sides of every single thing that we can, every story we touch, to the best of our ability. You can't balance them all, but we try. That's our job is to give it to them and let them make their decision. We know that and uh, when you get in the business for a while, you can tell uh, when a journalist is trying to sway you into thinking one way or another. And it, it's done every single day. The average person doesn't quite catch on, but they're getting there. They, they're beginning to look and see that a journalist, for instance, can leave out one simple little part and suddenly the whole story changes completely. What we're feeling now from the people who are consuming our news in the United States at any rate is they don't seem to want anymore that unbiased viewpoint of the news. They say they do, but by their feedback, they don't. They want news that is friendly to what their take is on the world. So what do educators need to do now to prepare them for the newsrooms of today. Uh, the, the thing I would suggest, first of all, well, let me say this. The students we're getting have already been much better prepared than they were, again, for years past. They come out of these universities with some ideas of what, uh, some ideas of what journalism is all about, some on broadcasting, certainly the technical aspects, they've got all of that down pretty good. Uh, there are some things where all of the schools are falling down, in my opinion, and that is they're not teaching things that you need in this business. History, government, in other words, the old civics classes. We have people uh, who have no concept of what the American Constitution is all about. They're in here trying to do news, have never had an opportunity to learn that. They weren't taught that. Um, uh, geography. You can find people who graduate from college and you ask them, find Vietnam on a map for me and they don't know where it is. So I would say get them hands on. When I was in college, I didn't, I wasn't told to take a camera out and go to events. I just decided to go out and um, shoot different events, renting cameras from the school, going to whether it was a, an event on campus, it was a press conference with the local media. I got out and I went to those events so I could do it hands-on. So I would say teachers need to tell them, uh, you're not going to get, we're not going to baby you, but you need to get out there and do something with a camera at least once a week. Uh, these new folks need to understand that they have uh, uh, quite a bit of power, especially in television, uh, not so much uh, in radio anymore. Uh, printed media is still having its problems, although most of us really sort of lean on that because we really like to the in-depth part of it. Mm -hmm. We've learned in our business that we have to say a whole lot of things in a minute and a half or two minutes. Mm -hmm.